Hello, and welcome to this episode of Highlights from the Hill, our series where we bring you all the interesting things and happenings in our public school system. I'm your co-host, Jim Cousins, and I'm here with Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, our school superintendent, and this week we are going to be talking about mindfulness in the middle school. So thank you for joining us, and welcome, Carol. Thank you, Jim. Always uh, a pleasure to be here. Um, I have brought with me today two colleagues. We have Mary Ellen Grady and Samantha Harris, and they're going to talk to us a little bit about the mindfulness program that they are starting at the middle school and some of the work that we hope to be doing in the community as well. So mm -hmm. I'll just let Mary Ellen and um, Samantha say a little bit about themselves. Sure. I'm Mary Ellen Grady. I'm an eighth grade English teacher right now. Um, I was the assistant um, principal at the middle school for six years and I'm really happy to be back where I start, all started and it feels like going back home. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm Samantha Harris. Um, I'm a special education teacher at the middle school and I'm also running the Empower program, a new SEL program at our middle school this year. So Samantha has just used the acronym SEL yeah. and um, that means for our audiences at home social emotional learning. And every single one of our school um, improvement plans, um, every, every school has one, has a social-emotional learning component. And so, interestingly, the two of them were mm -hmm. not trained at the same time to do mindfulness, but somehow just sort of found each other. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, I think that mindfulness fits beautifully into social-emotional mm -hmm. learning. So, because you're the experts, I'll let you talk a little bit about okay. how does uh, mindfulness fit into social-emotional learning. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah. Um, well, I'll start off by saying um, we first, several years ago, we, um, I wrote a grant and the Hopkinton Education Foundation um, supported that grant and was able to bring 12 teachers to work with an organization called Mindful Schools and who are, um, Mary Ellen was among those right. teachers mm -hmm. and they did, um, they did these courses to help bring mindfulness into the classrooms to help students and then I was allowed to do a year-long program through Mindful Schools and it was our hope that by giving students the time to relax, take a break, check in with themselves, that it would help them with any stress and anxiety that they were having and have them better centered in the classroom so learning um, could be more of a natural process for them while they were um, and putting, it, putting any stresses and anxieties to the side. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've um, used it in my classroom. Uh, or originally, I used it with teachers. So we would have a group of teachers before school in the morning, meet before 7 o'clock, and we would do just 10 minutes of meditation. And it was really a nice way to start your day. Mm -hmm. um, and then the teachers would bring it into the classroom. So several of them will do a mindful minute, sometimes right at the start of class. Some people do it when you're um, going into a change, you're going to a new subject, kind of just to put your mind around it. Um, and some people use it before quizzes so kids can have that breath to clear their head and be ready. But there's all kinds of different ways. I use it as a transition oftentimes, um, especially coming into class from f maybe lunch because everybody's really hyper and, you know, they're thinking about conversations they had. And it's just nice to take a breath and settle down. Um, Bill Meehan, who's one of our guidance counselors, was in my room today. So he hasn't seen it done in the class, and he was speaking to the students. So before I left the classroom with him, um, we, that's how we started. It's a routine that we use. So we did a mindful moment, and he said, that was really nice, you know, mm. just to take a breath, and everybody was just focused, ready to go. So, so uh, was this training through the grant the, your first exposure to mindfulness? Yeah, so it was for me. I took it, um, the two courses that Samantha had um, written the grant for, but then I also went, I was really interested in it, and I had um, kind of fallen behind on it, um, like a diet. I didn't do it as often as I should have, or, you know, exercise or whatever. And I felt badly about it, because I felt better about me and, and myself um, mm -hmm. when I was taking it. So there was a course at Harvard University that was three days, and it was 87 people from around the world, all walks of life, that came for three days of silence. And no electronics, no cell phones, no nothing, no computers. 
and it was probably it was a life changing life changing event for me because mm -hmm. um, I'm usually not quiet, um, and it gave me a chance to really center myself, and I I learned things about myself, how I needed that quiet time. Um, I'm a very social person, mm -hmm. and you know I'm I'm with kids all day, talking all day, and I have a lot of you know I have grandchildren I take care of, and I take care of my mom, so I'm at different places talking, mm. and it was just a really great thing to be able to get back to who I was, and it felt like almost rediscovering yourself. Mm. You yeah, know, so I like that. That's pretty cool, yeah. Samantha. I'm wondering what your history with mindfulness is. So. Um, yeah, that's a long story. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> when I, when, I'm not going to go into all the details, but um, save that for a different time. But um, when I was a teenager, I started to explore mindfulness and restorative practices. Mm -hmm. And um, after going through some hard times as a teenager, mm -hmm. as many of us do, coming out into my early 20s, I recognized that without mindfulness and restorative mm -hmm. practices embedded into my life, that I was not going to be successful and that having those practices um, as something I did daily and explored more and got into more, it brought an incredible amount of success to my educational path, career path, um, and just my path as a human being, my relationships. Um, so yeah, so for years I've been exploring and mindfulness and bringing it into my um, daily practice and then about five years ago, I decided that I didn't just want to bring it to myself, that I really wanted to bring it to my students. And I had been doing that in a very casual way in the classroom um, in my beginning years of teaching, doing mindful minutes, asking teachers I worked with, oh, can I like do a meditation with the kids today? And then looking at them like, okay. <laughs> um, and I decided that I wanted to go beyond just um, kind of doing it on my own. I wanted the certification. I wanted to go to that sec that the next level and really bring it um, not just to the students in my classroom, but school-wide, district-wide, yeah. and, and see where that went. Mm -hmm. So you said a couple of interesting things. So when you brought this to your colleagues, they were OK. Like, mm -hmm. there was a particular mm -hmm. skepticism. And you also said that you have a certification in this. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. My belief, and maybe this just comes from you know chit-chatting with people along the way, is that there are some people who would say this is kind of fluff. It, it's it's hooey. What what would you say to those people? Like how how is this not those things? Yeah. So there's there's a quote I really like, and I'm not going to get it perfect, but it talk it says something to the point of one you you can only meet someone as deep of, as they've met themselves. And I think that speaks to the depth of mindfulness. So for someone who was telling me, oh, that's just fluff, <laughs> I, would, I would ask them to try it. You mm -hmm. know, maybe just start small. Mm -hmm. um, sure. One thing that I learned um, through the process was just picking a point in my day about mm -hmm. where, where I really wanted to focus and be mindful. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was in my car. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that be everything around my car became mindful. And before I knew it, that was extending into other parts of my life. Mm -hmm. um, so when you start to practice and you pick that little moment, I think perhaps you'd see that um, it's beyond fluff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and maybe a little, maybe a little fluff. Which <laughs> and I say, what's wrong with fluff? Yeah. Who doesn't love fluff? <laughs> fluff is some of the, my favorite things in the world. Um, sure. And it's, you know, like I, my classroom runs around the mantra of, of being kind and how if, if we're kind with each other and kind with ourselves, everything else just follows. So I don't think, of, you know, I think of fluff as a good thing and a compliment when someone says she's fluffy. So, um, and, and I do think it helps you. And Samantha has her, you know, trigger point of she uses her car, which I use now with my grandchildren when I'm driving them places too. But I have a doorway because a doorway signifi sig signifies to me that you're walking into s someone new and it's a fresh start. And um, I used to, I, I still am a prayer. I prayed a lot, but now I use this and have, have like a mantra in my head as I go in and I know that everybody I meet there, I'm, th I'm there to meet for a reason. And I have to make it a good thing because it, this might be the best part of their day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's important to, especially when you're working with children, 
you never know what has happened to them. We, we don't know what's happened to the, the adults in the room. So you want to make sure that they have a good, you know, like a response to, to you and to your room and to each other and just remind them to be kind. So that is not fluff. No. You know? We did meet earlier to talk yeah. about a program that they might be doing in the community. Mm -hmm. And I think as I looked at the different facets mm -hmm. of mindfulness, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it goes long and far beyond simple meditation. Mm -hmm. And I think two components of that that surprised me were the love and empathy pieces. Yes. Um, and I think that those are really mm -hmm. important things for mm -hmm. us to be building, you know, in mm -hmm. our, our schools mm -hmm. every day with kids. Absolutely. Um, but I, I think now that our kids are kind of coming along and understanding a little mm -hmm. bit more about, about mm -hmm. mindfulness, um, but can you talk a little bit about the work you hope to do with parents in our community? Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, sure. Um, so, you know, we've, we've talked for a number of years, and um, I think we have a really special connection. And I consider um, Samantha my mindful mentor. Um, and, you know, we've thought about how we can bring this out. I've been fortunate enough to give two workshops, and it was my two of my daughters are also teachers in another system, and I was invited to talk to them, and I did a summer workshop and an opening for school workshop for them uh, about mindfulness with children. And we talked about how um, important it was that if you are a practicer of mindfulness, that people recognize something in you there's, and I think anybody can see most, especially in CM, not so much in me, um, there's a calmness that, that you just feel like you just want to talk with her. You feel relaxed, you feel calm, um, and it's something that as, if we can teach this to parents, if they can start this practice, it, without even teaching your children, there's something that comes forward from that. Um, they are able to, you know, get the reception that, that there's something better, that just the way you, you take a breath before you say anything or speak, um, you, you think about what, you're going, what your words are. Is this important? Is this not important? Mm -hmm. Is this kind? Because um, it, it al always must be kind. Yeah. So. Um, so I've always been a firm believer in just giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. And when I think of community in our school community, I think beyond our students, I think about our teachers and also mm -hmm. our parents. Mm -hmm. um, so I think both of us would mm -hmm. like to offer parents the opportunity to focus on just time for themselves to be mindful mm -hmm. and to build the practice in for them and um, bring that loving kindness in for themselves. Um, separate of being a parent, separate of having, uh, you know, what can I do for my child, mm -hmm. but instead looking at how can I bring this and do this for me. So within, I guess, the, the middle school um, in and of itself, you are kind of in that place where, you know, this is something that we do, we do mm -hmm. mindfulness. Mm -hmm. and. I would imagine that it's your goal to go from this is something that we do to this is who we are. So mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about how that process is working? Okay, I think, I think you can see pockets of it around our school, um, that this is who we are. Um, and I've been in the middle school for I think 18 years, um, and I've seen tremendous changes go in the middle school. I think it is a kinder place, a gentler place. Um, a more accepting place. Uh, we've worked. We've worked really hard on that, and I think students recognize that this is a good place to go. I've had um, a number of schools in the uh, students in come into the eighth grade this year for the first time, their first experience in Hopkinton, and it's been a really positive one. Mm -hmm. And you know, I asked a boy, "Do you do you like the classes here?" I love them, Mrs. Grady, and I thought that's that's so wonderful, mm -hmm. and he felt welcomed by people. So um, this is just another step in the way we welcome students in. We have, you know, we're working very hard on plans to, to ha bring new students in into our school. But even the ones existing there, you have to make sure you take care, care of the, them too. So I think this will become a part of us. We are an empathetic school. We are a kind school. We are a loving school. We value all parts of the child, and I think this is just one more component to bring it to life for mm -hmm. our community. Yeah. Many students mm -hmm. that come from other districts, who I work with, 
the first thing they say is everybody is so kind here. Mm -hmm. And I think that says a lot yeah. about our, our school, our district, mm -hmm. and the community. Um, from going to this is what we do to this is kind of who we are mm -hmm. regarding mindfulness. Um, you know, bringing, bringing that, allowing that space for students to have to stop and check in with themselves goes beyond that being kind to someone else. It starts, it brings it to that, this is who I am, I'm kind to myself too. And it gives permission that to slow down, mm -hmm. do a check-in, and then move forward. Mm -hmm. um, and as a community, if we have to agree that that's kind of, mm -hmm. this is how we are, mm -hmm. to give that space to children. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's one step beyond the kindness to others, but also kindness to yourself. Yeah. So what does the program look like at the middle school now? Is it just the two of you doing mindfulness during your day? Uh, no, <laughs> it's not <laughs> yeah, that. It's more than that. <laughs> no, no. Um, I do it in my classroom, and I I know there are other teachers that do it in their classroom. Um, so so you see it there. It's also us doing it. <laughs> oh, but that's um, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's in oh no, oh students. in our classroom. So it yes. could be a mindful um, moment before um, as they enter. In in mind, that's generally how it's mm -hmm. kind of how we start the class. We start. And today, somebody said, um, I, I, "I'd like to stand for a mindful moment." We can. I said, "We can. We can stand. Whatever you feel like doing." So, um, mm. you know, they they are very much accepting of it. There's still a few giggles every once in a while, and yeah. you know that's okay with me. Yeah. Um, and you know, S Sam reminded me it's co it's okay for us to look goofy and say we, this may look goofy to you, and that's what I said. But I said works for me. So like, if it works for you, great. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, so they do, they do do it, and I know that they used it particularly in a, a high-level math class that was very stressful, and they would do it routinely before a quiz, and students believed that they did better because they were able to concentrate and focus and take everything else that was going around them, you know, beforehand. So um, it looks different in different classrooms, but there's, there's parts of it everywhere in the school. Mm -hmm. Was there a lot of opposition when it first began of kids thinking it was kind of silly? Um, I wouldn't say a lot because I think kids are more accepting than adults are. Okay. Um, I would say in the faculty they may have been a little more <laughs> um, because I used to do a mindful moment before faculty meetings and not everyone wanted to yeah. participate in it. So that was okay with me. Um, but kids are accepting of trying something new. Mm -hmm. um, they. They want to know, know something new. They want to know something that mm -hmm. could work for their life. And they, if they see it's working for you, mm -hmm. they really want a piece of that. You yeah. know? So I think it's a good thing. Yeah. I would say beyond opposition, it was really difficult for some kids to find stillness. Mm -hmm. And we're mm -hmm. so connected. Mm -hmm. We're so connected to technology. Mm -hmm. We're always on the go. We're always going to this mm -hmm. next practice. Mm -hmm. And it's just we live in this go, go, go world. Mm -hmm. And um, so for to ask a child to even ask a, to ask an adult mm -hmm. to slow down even if it's just for 60 seconds and mm -hmm. stop is like what like mm -hmm. you want me to do that mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's hard and so some kids mm -hmm. do have difficulty with it and you just kind of work with it and you know maybe at, after a couple months of practicing all of a sudden they're able to sit for that mm -hmm. minute and and they're excited by that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think when you talk about, you know, sort of practicing, there mm -hmm. is an instructional component to this. So we talk about social-emotional learning. There mm -hmm. really is learning involved in this. Very often, mm -hmm. I think, you know, we can bring in programs and they are something the kids learn for a day mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. there may be two or three sessions across mm -hmm. the course of a school year or a semester. Um, but I think that this is different in the sense that it's different for every kid mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's like a lifelong practice, Absolutely. right? This is something that they take with them and they can keep sort of evolving right. in the ways right. that they practice mindfulness and then take it to additional levels Absolutely. so that they can yeah. better access mm -hmm. learning, they can better mm -hmm. access friendship, you know, just mm -hmm. different things. And I don't know if you've already seen those kinds of things start to happen. I, I see it all the time. I see it actually, um, I've done it with my children at school, but also with my grandchildren and my own children. So they practice now. But um, my five-year-old grandson, who is like 
really on the go all the time. And as his sister said, he's not very nice. I said, he is nice. He just, you know, gets wound up and excited. And I, I'll just hold him and we'll, we'll, I said, why don't we just breathe for a minute? Yeah. And to see the difference, and he can do it himself now. Before he, when we were laying at, and looking at the, the clouds, he was the one who would be jumping on me. And now he can look at the clouds and enjoy it and slow down and take a breath. And he feels better mm -hmm. afterwards. And he can articulate that, which I think is an amazing thing to be able to articulate that you knew you were up here and now you're here, mm -hmm. you know, and now you're ready to join in with everybody else. So it's amazing. So it, it does work for people. You know, I have a new puppy. Is there, is there oh, a puppy oh, program for I, this? You know, oh my God, there's a <laughs> dog. There is. <laughs> I have a video right, we'll talk of a after dog. The show. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, um, e even students, they're asking mm -hmm. to do it. If, like, if a teacher forgets to, that normally does it. <coughs> something else mm -hmm. is going on. Students will advocate and say, hey, you, you know, you we forgot got the to mind do the mindful minute. minute. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so, and there's the education of, like, different ways to be mindful mm -hmm. and do mindfulness, mm -hmm. but then there's also the education about what stopping and sitting actually does for the brain. Mm -hmm. And when students really get to understand that aspect too, it goes beyond just this thing that they do as well to being something very scientific that they mm -hmm. can connect to their bodies and know that, oh, this is happening in my brain right mm -hmm. now. Um, and when I do this, this is happening in my brain. Mm -hmm. So when is the information going out to parents about the sessions that you'll it's be running? Yeah. Our first meeting is November 28th. Okay, November 28th. <laughs> the evening okay. of November Yep, 28th. and that's the informational meeting. And then there will be a series of six weeks starting on January 3rd. And it will be every Thursday evening. We'll start at the middle school, but we'll, our initial meeting will be at the high school auditorium on the 28th. Very nice. Yeah. And it will be a great time of year because it's like the new year. So, yes. um, and it's also a Thanksgiving, right after Thanksgiving, so we can kind of work that in too. Sure. It will mm -hmm. coincide with yeah. everyone's sort of Down. new selfhood, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. yes. It comes with a new year. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. And gratefulness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, our time is coming to a close. I just want to congratulate you. I think this is a great thing. In my experience uh, through life with mindfulness, my wife and I have always said they should teach this in school mm -hmm. because everybody should know this stuff. It's yeah. just really good for life. Mm -hmm. So I congratulate you on that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes, and, and I'll personally thank you for the work that you're doing with our children. I think thank it's you. just such important work. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you for letting us do it. Okay. Oh, let's all right. Mm -hmm. And that is all the time that we have. I'd like to thank you for joining us for this episode and invite you to join us back for another one. And on the way out, we're going to leave you with a short video that was created at the middle school, which actually has some kids talking about mindfulness. To me, mindfulness means being aware of where you are, who you are, how you can move. Being able to go into things mentally prepared and ready to do it. It means sort of calming yourself down and not really paying attention to anything else. Mindfulness is something that lets you t take a step back. And just being able to stay calm and have a clear state of mind. It's kind of a way to like stop the violent reactions and kind of think about what you're doing and it kind of helps with stress and other stuff like that. Mindfulness is kind of practicing your way of calming yourself down in stressful situations. always knew mindfulness was like a thing but I never really like thought about it or tried it. So we use it in class a lot before um, class begins. I really feel like I've been more relaxed in life and just like when I have a situation that I'm uneasy about I kind of go into my own little world and I calm down. Well sometimes during the day like I get really excited for like the end of the day and stuff and I know I need to focus like during a test or a quiz or something and I can use mindfulness to um, help me. It really helps me calm down and it helps me get through hard things in life I guess. I feel like mindfulness is a more of a concept and it's not something that's physical so breathing can help but it's more taking what you know and putting that into a real life situation and doing something that you feel is more right than something else that you would have done. Uh, you might not get worked up so easily. You can 
think about what you're going to do and battle the situation instead of just going straight at it and maybe doing something you might regret. I kind of did the thing where you like count how much breaths you do and um, I kind of just helped calm me down like from the stress. Like everything you can use it. If I'm nervous before like a big game I can just like think about how I'm gonna play and it's just like helpful like getting ready for something that's challenging. Life isn't about what happens to you, it's about how you react and if you like get up or not. And so I feel like mindfulness is really important because you have the ability to choose the right thing instead of just reacting to what happens. Hello, my name is Officer John Corden of the Hopkins Union Police Department. I am here to explain some important information regarding opiate overdoses under the Good Samaritan Law, Chapter 94C, Section 34A. First, a person who in good faith seeks medical assistance for someone experiencing a drug-related overdose shall not be charged or prosecuted for possession of a controlled substance. Second, a person who experiences a drug-related overdose and in good faith either seeks medical assistance or other seeking assistance shall not be charged or prosecuted for possession of a controlled substance. Third, the act of seeking medical assistance for someone who is experiencing a drug-related overdose may be used as a mitigating factor in a criminal prosecution under the Controlled Substance Act. Lastly, a person acting in good faith may receive a Narcan prescription and administer it to an individual appearing to be experiencing an opiate-related overdose. For more information, please contact the Hopkinton Police Department or Denise Hildreth, Director of Youth and Family Services. Thank you. From the outside, it looked like I had it all together. Great education, good job, but inside I was massively insecure. Drinking helped me calm my fears, but I ended up losing everything. When I finally admitted I needed help, I came into Teen Challenge. And as time went on, I didn't feel so insecure. Now my whole world has been rebuilt, and I'm not going to lose it again.